Previously on Cat Lieben's Art. I hold a very special place in my heart for toys. So when Martian Toys reached out to me to ask if I wanted to put my art on a bunch of their totally wicked designer toys for a gallery art show, I jumped at the chance. So Martian shipped a box full of toys to my studio for me to begin painting, sculpting, and customizing them in any crazy way that I can come up with. And once they're all done, I'll ship them back to Philly to be part of a group show of fellow Chicago artists at their Mothership Toy Gallery. Now, I just have to figure out exactly what it is that I'm gonna do with all these little guys. And fast. Well, my first and second designer toy videos are out. And if you've been following along with me, you know how painting, sculpting, and epoxy coating all of these little dudes has turned out so far. But in this, the last of my three art toy themed videos, we're gonna be finishing up the rest of the Martian toys by painting itty bitty murals on an itty weensy shipping container and two teeny tiny brick walls. These toys are super cute and they're just screaming for street art, but they're so small. And spray painting any fine detail on these is gonna be nearly impossible, so I'm gonna have to figure out how to get her done. But first things first, let's go prime and prep our toys so that they'll be easier to paint. And bonus, this is gonna give me some time to figure out how I'm gonna make some miniature street art magic. And before we prime our shipping container, we're gonna mask off some of the areas that we don't want to be primed white. There are some little numbers and fake metal knobby looking things, and those are pretty cool. So we're gonna make sure that those are covered so that they don't get primed away. Now today we're gonna be priming the shipping container bright white. There were some details on it like the Martian logo, etc., that I wanted to make sure it's completely covered so that when I start layering my paint on top, it's not gonna show through at all. And the two mural walls are bright white vinyl, so I decided to skip the white primer spray here. So let's go ahead and get to priming. Because of their tiny size, I'm not going to be able to use spray cans to create murals on these toys, but I do still want to nod to that street art style, so I'm going to be layering my backgrounds with feathered gradients and paint splotches using Montana rattle cans. give my primer a good healthy amount of time to dry before I start applying any of my fluorescent paint. So I'm gonna let this dry overnight before slapping down any of those bright acrylic paints that I like to use. <laughs> Let's talk about matte medium. This is the clear stuff that we're gonna brush on our freshly primed pieces to make sure that our acrylics play nice and adhere properly. So let's get to brushing it on. Oh, do you see that crack too? You might have noticed these cracks forming when we were spraying our colors earlier in the video. What you didn't see was me behind the scenes coating the shipping container with matte medium before I primed and added the color layers. I did this because I wasn't totally decided on my design or the process that I wanted to use to paint the container. Yeah, learning moment. So to fix it, I used some sandpaper to even out the jagged parts of the cracks and resprayed the fluorescent green parts that had the issues and it looked much better. Let me know in the comments, have you ever experienced this? What was your fix?
Since I work with semi-translucent fluorescent paints, I like to make sure that my background is bright white so that no other elements are able to show through and look muddy and my colors look as bright as they can. So we're gonna be brushing a layer of gesso onto only the areas where we're going to be painting on our two brick walls. And now it's time for the part you've all been waiting for. Let's get to painting. like you've seen me do in my other videos, we're going to take our digital drawings from Procreate and project them onto the brick walls in order to rough in reference lines so that the details on the skulls line up perfectly on both sides. And you're going to see why this step is so important later, so stay tuned! Take the painting over the finish line with some crispy black outlines and some pretty fun details.
noise are all painted and now it's time to move on to my favorite part. The ooey, the gooey, the schmooey. Is that a word? Epoxy pour. Before we get to the pour, we have a little prep work to do. First, we're gonna start by propping up our toys so that the epoxy can run off and not stick the toy to the surface that it's sitting on. And as always, it's safety first. I recommend wearing gloves and a respirator mask, especially if you are allergic to epoxy resin and its fumes. Today, we're gonna to be using Maker Epoxy, a two-part epoxy resin from Total Boat. Part A is the resin part of the mix, and part B is the hardener. Gently stir the two parts together and get ready for that oh-so-satisfying epoxy pour. time might vary depending upon the temperature of the space that you're working in. So go ahead and look at the label on the Maker Epoxy to make sure that you're allowing for the proper amount of cure time before handling your project. All right, it's a couple days later and it looks like these toys have fully cured. They're not sticky and I'm not leaving any fingerprints. So I think we're finally ready to reveal these teeny tiny mural toys. Let's take a look. bubble wrap and pack up all of the toys that I finally completed to be shipped off to the Mothership Toy Gallery in Philly for the grand opening of the Look What the Wind Blew In art exhibition. I'm so excited to see everyone's work on display together. Woohoo! dig these toys and want to own them, they're available on the Martian Toys website now! Making these toys was a ton of fun and I'd like to give a special thanks and a shout out to Martian Toys and Mothership Toy Gallery for inviting me to be part of this show. If you enjoyed watching this, please consider subscribing, spelling, giving me a thumbs up, and sharing this with your friends. And as always, thanks for watching Cat Legends Art.